For 49 years, paleontologists stared at two massive arms and claws buried in the Mongolian desert, completely baffled by what creature they belonged to. These were not just any arms. They were eight feet long with formidable claws that suggested a powerful predator. Some scientists thought they belonged to a giant raptor capable of taking down massive prey. Others believed it was a prehistoric sloth that climbed massive trees. When the full skeleton was finally discovered in 2014, the truth was so bizarre that it shattered everything we thought we knew about dinosaur evolution. The story of this discovery began decades earlier in the scorching Gobi Desert. In 1965, Polish paleontologist Zofia Kilan Jaworowska was leading an expedition through the Gobi Desert when her team stumbled upon something that would haunt the scientific community for the next five decades. Buried in the Nemegd Basin at a site called Altan Ula III, they unearthed two enormous forelimbs, each measuring 7.9 feet in length, attached to a shoulder girdle and scattered bone fragments. What they did not find was equally important. No skull, no spine, no legs, and no clues about what kind of creature could possess such massive appendages. These were not ordinary dinosaur arms. The bone structure was incredibly robust with powerful muscle attachment points that suggested tremendous strength. The claws themselves were formidable, broad and blunt-tipped, designed for digging and gathering rather than slashing. But without the rest of the skeleton, scientists faced an unprecedented puzzle that would challenge their understanding of dinosaur anatomy and evolution. The scientific community erupted with competing theories about what this mysterious creature might have been. Some paleontologists examined the massive size and robust build of the arms, proposing they belonged to a large carnosaur that could have been a formidable predator. They envisioned a powerful theropod that used these appendages to overpower prey, though the evidence remained frustratingly incomplete. The sheer size of the arms suggested a creature that could dominate any ecosystem it inhabited. Other researchers took a completely different approach, noting similarities between these arms and those found in ornithomimid dinosaurs, the so-called ostrich mimics. John Ostrom proposed in 1971 that Dina Kyrus belonged to the ornithomimosaur group, suggesting it might be a massive sloth-like creature that used its enormous arms for climbing prehistoric trees or pulling down branches to feed on vegetation. This theory painted a gentler picture of the mystery dinosaur, transforming it from a fearsome predator into a peaceful giant. When Halska Osmulska and Ewa Ronievich officially named the creature Dinochirus mirafikus in 1970, they chose words that reflected the scientific community's bewilderment. Dinochirus meant terrible hand, while mirafikus translated to wonderful or strange, a name that captured both the awe and confusion these fossils inspired. Decades passed without any additional Dinochirus discoveries. The arms remained the only evidence of this enigmatic giant sitting in museum collections as one of paleontology's greatest unsolved mysteries. Scientists could only speculate about its diet habitat and behavior based on these isolated appendages. The creature became legendary within paleontological circles often described as one of the most mysterious and bizarre dinosaurs ever discovered. The incomplete fossil record had led science down multiple theoretical paths, each seeming plausible based on the limited evidence available. What nobody could have predicted was just how dramatically wrong all their careful theories would prove to be. The skeletons that emerged from the Mongolian desert in 2014 revealed a creature so anatomically bizarre that it seemed like nature had raided the parts bin of completely different animal families. When Yong Nam Lee and his international team published their findings in Nature, they presented the world with a 36-foot-long giant weighing approximately 14,000 pounds that bore no resemblance to any of the theories scientists had developed over the previous 50 years. Every single prediction about Dinochirus had been wrong. The first shock came from examining the skull, which was nothing like what paleontologists expected from those massive claw-bearing arms. Dinochirus possessed a completely toothless skull topped with a broad, flattened bill that resembled a duck's beak. This beak was perfectly designed for scooping and filtering soft materials from water, not for hunting prey or stripping leaves from trees. The jaw muscles were surprisingly weak for such a large theropod, indicating a feeding strategy that required minimal bite force. Even more perplexing was the creature's back, which featured a prominent hump, 
created by extraordinarily long neural spines that extended upward from the vertebrae. These neural spines reached an astounding 8.5 times the height of the vertebral centra, forming a structure remarkably similar to what you would find on a modern camel. The hump gave Dinochirus a profile unlike any other known theropod, making it instantly recognizable from a distance. The legs presented another anatomical puzzle that defied the giant predator theories. Rather than the long, powerful limbs you would expect from a massive hunter, Dinochirus had surprisingly short, stocky legs that seemed almost comically undersized for its massive body. These legs ended in broad, flat feet that were clearly adapted for walking on soft surfaces rather than pursuing prey across firm ground. The foot structure indicated a creature that spent considerable time in muddy, unstable terrain. The contents of Dinochirus' body cavity told the final part of the story. Gastroliths smooth stones used for grinding plant material in the stomach were found alongside fish bones and other organic remains proving that this giant was an omnivore with a varied diet that included both plant and animal matter. The stomach contents painted a picture of a creature that foraged in aquatic environments, using its specialized bill to filter food from shallow waters. These discoveries transformed our understanding of theropod diversity during the late Cretaceous period. Dinochirus was not the fearsome predator or gentle tree browser that scientists had envisioned, but something entirely unique a massive semi-aquatic omnivore that had carved out its own ecological niche. But understanding what this creature looked like was only half the puzzle. The real question was how such a seemingly mismatched collection of body parts could function together in the wild wetlands where it lived. Every feature worked in perfect harmony within the challenging environment of the late Cretaceous Nemect Formation. This sprawling delta system featured meandering rivers that carved through lush wetlands, creating an intricate network of shallow lakes, mudflats, and dense riparian forests. The humid environment supported incredible diversity from small mammals and crocodilians to massive sauropods and apex predators like Tarbosaurus. For a gentle giant like Dinochirus, this landscape offered abundant food resources but also presented constant threats. Within this complex ecosystem, every aspect of Dinochirus' anatomy represented a specialized solution to the challenges of semi-aquatic living. The creature's distinctive duck-like bill was not just an evolutionary quirk. It was a precision-engineered feeding tool perfectly adapted for its lifestyle. The broad, flattened shape allowed Dinochirus to sweep through shallow water, filtering out soft, aquatic vegetation algae and small invertebrates with remarkable efficiency. The weak jaw muscles that had puzzled scientists made perfect sense in this context, as filter feeding required gentle suction and manipulation rather than a powerful crushing force. Those seemingly awkward stocky legs served a crucial function in the soft, unstable terrain of the Nemegt wetlands. The broad flat feet operated like natural snowshoes distributing the creature's massive weight across a wide surface area to prevent sinking into deep mud or getting trapped in boggy conditions. This adaptation gave Dinochirus remarkable stability while wading through marshes and river deltas where other large dinosaurs would struggle to maintain their footing. The prominent back hump likely represented one of nature's most versatile evolutionary solutions. During the wet season when food was plentiful, this structure may have stored fat reserves that would sustain Dinochirus through leaner periods. The hump also functioned as a thermoregulatory system helping the giant maintain optimal body temperature in the humid, variable climate of the Delta environment. Additionally, this distinctive silhouette likely played a role in social recognition and possibly territorial displays among members of the same species. The extensive feathering discovered on Dinochirus fossils provided essential adaptations for its aquatic lifestyle. These primitive hair-like feathers created an insulating layer that helped regulate body temperature during long periods spent in cool water. The feathers may have also offered waterproofing properties that kept the creature's skin dry and prevented heat loss when foraging in rivers and lakes. Rather than representing evolutionary compromises, these seemingly contradictory features formed a cohesive adaptation strategy that allowed Dinochirus to exploit ecological resources unavailable to other large theropods. While tyrannosaurs dominated terrestrial hunting and sauropods monopolized high browse vegetation, Dinochirus carved out its own profitable niche in the aquatic margins of the Nemect ecosystem. 
However, accessing these rich feeding grounds came with serious risks that would test every one of these remarkable adaptations. The ancient wetlands of Mongolia were far from peaceful sanctuaries. While Dinochirus foraged peacefully through shallow waters, it shared these rich ecosystems with Tarbosaurus, a massive tyrannosaur that could reach lengths of 39 feet and weigh up to 11,000 pounds. These apex predators possessed bone-crushing jaws filled with serrated teeth designed for dismembering large prey, making every feeding session a potential life-or-death encounter for the gentle giant. Fossil evidence reveals that these encounters were not hypothetical threats. Paleontologists have discovered actual Tarbosaurus bite marks etched into Dinochirus gastralia, the belly ribs that protected its vital organs. These fossilized wounds tell a dramatic story of predator-prey interactions that played out millions of years ago in the Nemect Formation. The bite marks show characteristic puncture patterns and tooth drag marks that match perfectly with Tarbosaurus dental anatomy, providing direct evidence that these peaceful omnivores regularly faced attacks from Asia's most dangerous predators. When confronted by a charging Tarbosaurus, Dinochirus could not rely on speed. Its short legs and massive body made escape impossible on open ground. Instead, those seemingly oversized arms that had puzzled scientists for decades may have served a defensive purpose, though their blunt claws were better suited for digging and gathering than for combat. The muscle attachment points on these arms indicate tremendous strength, suggesting they could deliver powerful strikes, but their primary function remained foraging rather than fighting. The creature's impressive size alone may have served as a deterrent to many potential attackers. Standing 36 feet long and weighing over 14,000 pounds, an adult Dinochirus presented a formidable target that even a large Tyrannosaur would approach with caution. The prominent dorsal hump added to its imposing silhouette, potentially making predators think twice before initiating an attack on such a massive opponent. The semi-aquatic lifestyle provided crucial escape options that land-dwelling predators could not match. When threatened, Dinochirus could retreat into deeper waters where its broad feet provided superior footing on muddy substrates, while the heavier, more terrestrially adapted Tarbosaurus would struggle with unstable footing and buoyancy issues. The water itself became a defensive barrier that neutralized many of the Tyrannosaurus' hunting advantages. The existence of multiple Dinochirus fossils, despite living alongside such formidable predators, demonstrates that these gentle giants found ways to coexist with apex predators in their shared ecosystem. The fossil record shows evidence of attacks through preserved bite marks revealing a complex ecological relationship where predators and prey shaped each other's evolution throughout the late Cretaceous period. This dynamic interaction between hunter and hunted illustrates how even the most unlikely creatures could find their place in prehistoric ecosystems through remarkable adaptations. The 49-year mystery of Dinochirus stands as paleontology's greatest reminder that nature's solutions to survival challenges often defy our expectations and categories, creating creatures that seem impossible until proven real. The discovery has also prompted a re-evaluation of paleontological methodologies, particularly in dealing with incomplete fossil remains. The initial misinterpretations underscore the importance of caution when drawing conclusions from limited data and the need for continuous re-evaluation as new evidence emerges. The journey from mysterious arms to complete reconstruction demonstrates how scientific understanding evolves and how a single discovery can revolutionize our perception of prehistoric life. Next time you see a fossil fragment, remember that it might be hiding a creature as remarkable as the terrible hand.